very excited to be here and very excited to be on the uh, panel with so many brilliant minds. Really difficult being a sixth presentation with all these really cool products to try to do something where people don't fall asleep. Um, so we're going to talk about smart glasses. Surprise, surprise. Not really. But um, we think that I'm going to need the slide thingy. I forgot to take it, didn't I? Thank you. So what is, what is OptInvent? So I'm, I'm the CEO and, and founder, co-founder of OptInvent. And we, we think we're creating a new device category, which I'll try to tease you with a little bit. I'm not going to show everything to keep a little bit of the suspense. And we are trying to create a new mobile uh, AR experience. So we're not about um, you know, immersive VR. Uh, we're, we're more about really mobile AR, getting the people to wear AR, uh, AR enabled hardware. And we're a, special, we're a technology company, obviously specialized in a disruptive near to eye projection display technology and, and wearable tech products. So we're, we're a hardware company. Uh, and we are one of the pioneers of smart glasses. We started way back in 2008. Um, and we've been here at this show. I think we're a veteran of this show. We show up almost every year since its uh, beginning. We have two product lines. We actually have a product line that is shipping. Um, believe it or not, it's, it's not vaporware. You can come and demo it. It's shipping. You can buy it. It costs 950 US dollars. It's even very cheap. Um, and it's a smart glass for professional applications. And then we have uh, a product called the Aura X, which we're very excited about. You can come by our, our booth and, and see the, uh, the Aura X and where we're at on that device. So a little bit about our smart glasses. I don't want to put you to sleep because everybody talks, says the same thing. We have, it's, you know, it's a smart glass with lots of compute power. It's got a dual core microprocessor. It's got six axis, or nine axis position sensor, gyro compass accelerometer. It's got plenty of memory. It's got a five megapixel camera with autofocus. It's got a capacitive trackpad and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and blah, blah, blah. So it's like an Android tablet on your face. It runs applications as a standalone device. And we're very honored to have recently won the Gold Edison Award. So I guess it's kind of like the Oscars for technology. And, and the Aura One uh, took the gold. And we're, we were also nominated uh, for the Innovation Top 40. Um, so that's the Aura One. It's our current product. It's shipping. Um, and ba it's based on our patented uh, and scalable um, light guide based technology. So this is a completely transparent uh, light guide based technology. It's the only one in the world based on molded plastic elements. So scalability, it's all about scalability and cost here, as well as having other advantages such as a, a brighter display. It's, it's a very bright, crisp experience. And it's got a much bigger field of view versus a lot of the other light guide based technologies. Um, and it's patented. Um, and it's all plastic. So very robust, shatterproof, etc. The Aura One, as I said, it's a hardware platform uh, for professional applications. We, we don't make the apps. We have partners who do that with us. But it's a very, there's an SDK. It's very easy to develop applications. It's a generic Android lollipop-based device. And right now, we're getting quite a bit of traction in the logistics, maintenance, industrial, uh, and medical sectors with this device, just like any other smart glass. So I hope you're not all asleep. Um, so smart glasses for enterprise, OK. That's, where, that's what everybody's talking about. But what about consumer? That's what excites me personally. Uh, I've had 25 years of experience in consumer products. Um, we think that there is, uh, there is this holy grail out there of the consumer AR device. And the problem, though, is that smart glasses, uh, you know, there's a paradigm prison of consumer smart glasses. That, that young lady up there is wearing normal glasses. Everybody knows what those look like. I'm wearing normal glasses. And an equally attractive young lady on the bottom is wearing smart glasses. But the problem is she looks like a cyborg. And so no matter you know, how hard you try, there's physics. There's, you, know, you have to put electronics in there, a battery, a display. The face is sacred real estate. Consumers do not want to put technology on their faces. This is the key point that, that we're trying to make. And that's Google Glass. That's one of the better, I think, better implementations of a smart glass device. They try to make it as small as possible, but still big fail for the consumer. Um, and even Google is, I think, turning towards the enterprise segments. So the, the message here is that 
you know, I'm not, we're not saying smart glasses are dead. We're saying smart glasses for consumers, for mobile applications, not going to happen. Um, so basically, experience, cost, applications, those are all the classical things, typical things that we know about what makes a consumer device appealing. But here we have a new kind of parameter, which is social acceptance. People do not want to go around with technology loaded up on a, a form factor, essentially, that can't absorb it. So we're trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole. So what do we do? So we have the, the core technology to do this because it's scalable and we can do it at a low cost, but it's a form factor issue. And we think that the holy grail, at least in the interim before these things look like this, right, maybe within the next five, 10 years, the interim is a different device. It's a different form factor. We're thinking out of the box. It's a, cons it's a product that consumers might actually want to wear. And I don't want to give everything away, but come by our booth, number 51, and try this out. And I've got a little video teaser that I want to show you, if we can get that running. As it says, coming soon, look for us on a crowdfunding site near you, and thank you for listening. Um, if you, you know, we're going to change over, but you, if, I mean, we can, questions? yeah, if you, is there a, any questions? We, we can, we're going to bring everyone up, there is time, so I think maybe we'll have, oh, there's one question here. Don't be shy. Looks like the Aura X has the, uh, the um, headphone set, so... Oh, don't give it away. <laughs> so is it more geared toward gamer um, consumers, or...? That's actually a really good point. The, the answer is yes. It's, it's actually targeted at any demographic that wears headphones. So I'm too old, basically. Um, it's not for 8 to 80. I think it's more for, like, 15 to 30-year-olds um, that obviously already wear headphones, either for gaming applications, but we think this thing is more for going out, being in the subway, walking around, wearing these things, listening to music. And then, it's, it's almost like a stealth device, we're introducing a display. So we don't think that's a quantum leap, whereas smart glasses were kind of like, you know, coming out of nowhere. This is like a known form factor that is bulky, and it's okay. And people wear them, and they listen to music, and then now we're introducing a new dimension, which is visual. And so what can you do with that? Well, I guess come by our booth and, and you'll see, but we think that there's some obvious use cases for this device, being that it's a headphone. We don't have to invent stuff you know, about you know, smart glasses can be used for this and that, because people don't get that, right? The average consumer doesn't get the use cases, whereas here, people know what headphones are about, right? And here we're just giving a visual element. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we can't skimp on the, uh, on the acoustics, right? It's a headphone at the end of the day. So we, we're working with partners who are already you know, manufacturing headphones. There's some major headphone manufacturers that we're working with that will help us with the acoustics part. We're not acoustics experts, but we do have a very capable codec in there. It's a professional-grade codec. We're going to have 50-millimeter you know, deep bass speakers, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, I don't want to say that's the easy part. Um, but that stuff's all well known, right? It's not like we have to reinvent the wheel to, to have a good acoustic, acoustic experience. Here we're also adding another element, which is awareness, because this is not an immersive device. You still want to be in the environment. And so it's got a mic, it's got a very capable processor. We're going to pump that sound back into the, the, the audio stream if the user wants it, or he can cut it off and have noise, noise isolation.